And welcome back, Mindsetters. Hope you had a great little break there. And you went and did whatever you had to do. You went to the bathroom. You went to got to some, something to drink. You answered the phone. Whatever you had to do. Now you need to p pay attention and focus. You need to get your pens and pads out. And make sure that you guys are making notes. But on that note, this is where I hand over to Mr. Aslam. Aslam, continue. I like the way you pun on notes there. <laughs> Guys, welcome back. I'm hoping you're refreshed and ready to roll again. We were busy with, before the break, mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. Now we're going into a little bit more of the examples. Again, to remind us, in mutualism, both organisms, both organisms benefit. So mutualism, if we have to define it, is a symbiotic relationship between two organisms where both benefit key words, both and benefit. Okay? And let's look at an example. A beautiful example is from your grade 11 work, lichens. Lichens are actually two organisms in one. They are made up of algae and fungi. Now, if you remember your grade 11 work, you'll know that fungi have no chlorophyll. Therefore, obviously, they cannot manufacture their own food. Algae, on the other hand, generally, if they're green algae, they would have chlorophyll. They will have chlorophyll. And if they do have chlorophyll, they can manufacture their own food. So the algae makes the food. Now, what are we doing now? One was we said what, or we explained what mutualism is. Now we are giving an example. So we're saying lichens is an example of mutualism, because in this case, you don't have to say, well, you'll have to explain that in lichens, uh, there's a mutualistic relationship between algae and fungus, because there should be two organisms for this relationship. One organism on its own cannot have a relationship. So we're talking about algae and fungi having a relation together, mutualistic relationship. Now what we are doing, we're going one step further. We're explaining how they benefit each other. The algae makes food, but it needs some way to keep moist. So the fungus forms a crust around the algae, which keeps the moisture in. And in this way, both organisms benefit. The algae is getting protection and cover, so it remains moist. And the fungus, on the other hand, will get food from the algae. So both organisms benefit. And here's an example of the lichen. By the way, if you remember... You did this last year in grade 11, and lichens you'll see either on rocks, you'll see li lichens on trees, on the barks of trees, etc. Different types of uh, lichens, folios, lichens, crustos, lichens. You do not have to know that for this section. We are just merely giving a, an example. By the way, guys, remember there are many more examples of mutualism out there. We are just selecting a few to show you. And I've chosen this one because it's not so much mentioned in the textbooks, so it's something different. F add to your bank. Another one there is the cleaner fish and the moray eel. These cleaner fish here and the moray eel. There's a diagram. And what did it do? Obviously, it eats the parasites and food bits out, very much like what we said about the bird and the crocodile earlier. Uh, on the inside of this moray eel, it gets its meal, and it is protected from the predators by the fierce eel. Obviously, you know, I'm moving with this big guy. Nobody's going to come and mess with me. So I'm getting protection. And I'm getting food. And meanwhile, the big guy is getting a cleanup. And the, f the, 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 the cleaner fish also gets rid of parasites that are in this fish. So they both benefiting. Simple. Next one is on commensalism. One species benefits while the other is unaffected. Now, here, unaffected with an A there, right? Okay. Here, what happens is, these, now, here this big debate. Some people say that uh, the benefit here is more leaning towards the birds, the egrets, birds here, so therefore it's commensalism. Other authors argue that they both benefit, so it's mutualistic. Now, my own example, and please, guys, you cannot use this in an exam. I want to buy a house, and when I want to buy this house, I go to my 
good friend, Tai, who, as you can see, has got a lot of money. And Tai says, okay, I would give you a loan of 200 or 300. I don't know if you can get a house at two, 300,000 these days. But anyway, he loans me the money. And he says, listen, you pay me as you can. Okay? And I want exactly whatever, I, whatever I'm lending you, I want the same money back. Mm -hmm. As opposed to me going to the bank and taking a loan on the bank and paying 6 or 7%, 8% interest to the bank. Now, when I pay back the loan to Ty, Ty hasn't benefited in any way. Mm. And if I pay him back, obviously, he wouldn't lose anything either. Meanwhile, I would have benefited because I got an interest-free loan. That is what commensalism is about. It's not an example of commensalism. It's just an explanation to make you understand what we mean by when we say commensalism, okay? But, but if I don't pay Ty, don't tell him this, but if I don't pay him, the whole relationship changes. It's no more commensalism because he is losing. I benefit. And then you become, what, what relationship is that then? Parasitism. Parasitic. I would be the parasite, and he would be the host, he would be losing. He's harmed. I'm benefiting. Okay? Yes, and I would be extremely, extremely angry. <laughs> and if he gets hold of me, then <laughs> it may be predator prey. <laughs> If he eats me, <laughs> after he kills me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So the cattle, egret, and the cows. The cattle help the egret who look after grasshopper, look for grasshoppers and beetles that are raised by the cows. As the cow is moving, the grasshoppers, etc., start moving. So the eagles pick them up and they eat them up. Now and then they get a free ride on the cow. They sit on the back. So they got a taxi for free looking for ticks and flies, so when that happens, when they're looking for ticks and flies, obviously now it's a bit of an issue. If they do not sit and have the ticks and flies, up to that point there, it's commensalistic. But if they move on and they take away the ticks and flies away from the cow, then it becomes mutualistic. Can you see that a relationship can change in, in this one thing as well, in one example. Another example is the barnacles and the whales. The barnacles need a place to anchor, Therefore, as you can see on the whale's body, they have plenty. They must wait for food to come their way. They hitch a ride on a whale who delivers them to a food source. Take him somewhere else, drops him off there. The whale is not benefiting, is not harmed in any way. Drops it there, the whale is not uh, affected. The barnacles are winning all the way. So, commensalistic relationship. And parasitism. One species benefits while the other is harmed. Symbiotic relationship between two organisms where one organism benefits and the other one is harmed. Okay, that's simple. And here we talk of the mistletoe, which is an aerial parasite. It climbs onto a tree and it does not have any roots of its own and it cannot manufacture its own food as such, so therefore it lives off the tree that it attaches itself to in this case here. Without that tree, it would die. And while it lives off this tree, it slowly chokes out the life of the host. In other words, it draws the water all the time, and the tree that it is uh, uh, hitched onto would die. So therefore that tree is harmed, and the mistletoe is benefiting, so parasitism. Wow, that changes Christmas in, for me in many <laughs> ways. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Under the mistletoe, eh? Yep. Uh, this one's here. We all may have encountered some time or the other bed bugs. These are small nocturnal parasites. Nocturnal, by the way, some environment ecology, nocturnal, they are active at night like many of you, who are more active at night than during the day. And they are parasites. We know what a parasite is on unsuspecting humans like you and I, all of us. They feed exclusively on blood. That is what they want. They want blood. Their bites often result in allergic reactions. Obviously, we get harmed in some way or the other. You're going to get pimples and bumps all over your body, it will be itchy and scratchy, and if you're going to scratch too much, you're going to infect the area, and so on and so on. Obviously, you need to get rid of the bugs. And the famous sleep tight, and don't let the 
bed bugs bite. There you go. That's where it came from. They are parasites. Tapeworms, grade 11. You've learned about tapeworms, grade 10 and 11. Again, uh, this is a, a cucumber a tapeworm. The host is a dog or a cat. Or we can talk of a, uh, a tina solium, which you have probably learned about. That is, the hosts are pig and man. So it's found in pork and in man. So you've got two hosts, a primary host and a secondary host. Man is an intermediate host. It just goes through and goes back to the pig, and then it, goes, it, it stays there, in a, in, and, and it moves on in that direction. Okay? So that's what we are saying there. Make sure that if you have pets at home, and in this case here, dogs or cats, you make sure that you clean them regularly and you take them to the vet regularly, regularly so that you seeing that they do not have these things but because they can transfer it to you. The same goes when you are eating pork. Make sure that you are not eating pork that is not, has not been certified healthy by health inspectors in the abattoirs, etc. And if you do, Perhaps living on a farm, you just slaughter your own and you're having uh, your own pork there at home or you're having rice. Make sure that you cook your meat well. Above 40 degrees, you shouldn't have a problem. Okay, that then brings us to the end of the symbiosis. I'm going to skip this last bit here and I'm going to come back to it because we need to check our learning. All right, let's start with this one. The question is very simple. It says, classify the following symbiotic relationships under mutualism, commensalism, or parasitism. Uh, in our national exams and in our provincial exams, we rarely get questions like this so long with this type of thing. This is just so that we want to, this is more an exercise than an exam question. In an exam, they could give you diagrams of examples and ask you to name them and explain the relationship between them. Or they could just give you, say, differentiate between commensalism and mutualism or commensalism and parasitism or any one of them with examples. Three to six, uh, three marks each, you get about nine marks for all of that. Here we're only asking you to identify in this particular case. They say E. coli bacteria in the human large intestine produce vitamin K. The large intestine provides a place to live and nourishment for the bacteria. What do the E. coli do? They produce vitamin K for the human. What does the human do? It provides shelter and nourishment for the bacteria. Win, win. Both benefit, so mutualism. Simple. A person is infected with tapeworm from eating raw pork. The tapeworm absorbs nutrients from the small intestine and the person becomes sick. Notice, notice how I'm underlining the key words, guys. That's important. So the person becomes sick. In other words, he is being harmed. And the tapeworm is benefiting because it's getting a free ride, free shelter, no rent, no telephone bills, no digestion, free chow, doesn't have to go and buy chow. So in that way, one is benefiting, the other one is harm. You got it right, parasitism. Rhizobia bacteria, living in association with plant roots, turn nitrogen from the air into compounds. In, and if you know your nitrogen cycle, it will convert nitrogen to nitrates. The benefit to the bacteria is unclear. In most cases, they would say that the bacteria gets food from uh, the plant. It's not unclear, really. The bacteria get food from the plant. And in that way, obviously, both benefit. So this is mutualism. Rhizobia is one example. The other one is nodular bacteria. They live in the roots, especially. Okay. The yucca moth lays eggs in the ovary of a yucca flower. At the same time, the moth pollinates the flower. Flower benefiting, getting pollinated. Yucca, getting eggs protected. So, obviously, mutualism. One type of algae lives inside reef-building coral. 
The algae causes the coral to grow faster, and the coral provides nutrients that the algae can use, both benefiting mutualism. Small plants called epiphytes grow on the branches of rainforest trees without harming them. Uh, the tre uh, harming the trees. Up in the branches, the epiphytes can get enough light and water and nutrients from the tree. The tree gets no benefit from the epiphytes, so neither harmed nor benefiting commensalism. Lichens are made up of algae and fungi living together. Okay, this one we don't have to do, guys, because we've done it already, mutualism. Crown gall disease weakens plants and slows their growth. The bacterium that causes the infection obtains nutrients from the plants. Obviously, gall disease weakens harm. Gets nutrients from the plant, benefit. So, parasitism. Guys, if you can understand this part here, then you've understood the concepts that we have discussed up to now about this section. Mutualism, commensalism, parasitism, and uh, uh, those three, obviously. Okay? We're moving on with questions because we, we're going to go back to some of the, uh, the, the one section I'm leaving for towards the end. This one here is very clear. Uh, there's a whole passage, and the passage is talking about an impala population, and there were so many in so much time and so on. I'm not reading the whole passage. It's there. We're going straight to the questions in this case here. It's because sometimes we can... We can glean information. I'll go back there, but you don't do that. You read the passage first, and then you answer the questions. Differentiate between intraspecific and interspecific competition. You didn't need the passage for that, obviously. Intraspecific competition between or within the same species, and inter different. species. Okay, prey and predator. The prey, the prey is the organism that is being hunted and killed for food. And the predator is the one that hunts and kills another for food. And with that, over to time. All right. So on that note, mindsetters, I hope, I hope, I hope you're enjoying yourselves as much as we are. Make sure that you guys are making notes and do not disappear because we'll be right back after this break. <laughs>